Welcome everybody to the Vision Leadership Podcast. I am Dwayne Roberts. Listen, I want to first just say thank you for taking time out your day and joining me. Um, I, today is all about uh, becoming practitioners of leadership. I, know, I think the last week I shared how uh, how important it was or how passionate I, I become about leadership. And I believe that leadership is in every aspect of our lives, you know, um, and becoming a practitioner of elite of leadership has been a goal of mine um, for some years now. I'm very passionate about growing myself um, personally and professionally and leadership. And so today I wanted to talk to you about unlocking your leadership potential. Yep, being able to unlock your uh, leadership potential. See, much, much of who we are as leaders, it really stems from our behaviors. So many factors mold and shape who we are. Things like role models from our past, how we were educated in high school or through uh, second, uh, secondary uh, schooling, um, our life experiences. The truth is, many leaders often focus on their past experiences in efforts to gain 21 century results within their organizations. And some of you are saying, what in the world do you mean by that? Listen, leaders are st still practicing old leadership styles and behaviors. And to, to advance in the 21st century, uh, particularly uh, us individuals who really want to grow and develop and maximize who we are or, and as leaders and maximize on our potentials as leaders, we have to develop um, develop a new way to approach our leadership. So much of what I do is coaching and consulting. You know, it's my aim to, to really help uh, nonprofits, uh, help nonprofits identify gaps, formulate dynamic visions, build alignment within their organization's culture so they can fulfill their purpose and maximize on their potential. That's my passion. That's my desire, you know? And I recently sat with a, a leader in a local nonprofit who shared with me his goals to establish his organization commitment and follow through in producing, the bottom line, producing the, their bottom line as well as results. He was highly focused on results. However, he shared his team wasn't always in alignment with the vision, then and as well as didn't always, uh, uh, per, well, well, let's say make sure I say that way, it wasn't in alignment or or they didn't know where to start or know how to accomplish the task that he was giving them. So I asked him, I said, uh, why do you think? Why why did you think you were getting the negative responses or results? And what could you have recommended or what actions could you have implemented within your team or within your organization to produce the results or follow through that you so desire? His response to me was that he sat with his members and expressed uh, his, his expectations of them. And each person at that time were willing to meet the objectives as well as be committed to the nonprofit's vision and mission. He also went on to say, needless to say, they're all adults and shouldn't have should have not taken on the responsibility if they didn't think they can fulfill the requirements. Now, I want to pause. You know, that's a very true statement when we really think about it. But when we as leaders, when we really consider how we, what we think and what we feel, do we think that's just to believe that people shouldn't want to help or want to serve because they don't think they can fulfill a position? How many times have you yourself went to go do something or, or was committed to do something and felt you had the credentials to do it? But when you got there, maybe you, you, you didn't feel as confident as you did as you first sat out to go do it. Could that have very well been the, the uh, these members, these teams, team members' uh, point of view and moving forward and working with this particular organization? Let's be real. Um, today, with all, all the things that's going on in, 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 in our society and all throughout the world, 
people are more moved and passionate about making a difference. Everybody wants to impact their community. Everybody wants to serve at some capacity. So even if they uh, may not be able to fulfill the commitment or produce the results, should they be overlooked because of their desire to serve and help become limited, limited in their confidence, limited in their beliefs, limited in their understanding of what the organization may require or demand from them? Let's think about it. We're in the nonprofit sector. We all about what's free and being able to get free service, to get free uh, uh, work from people, you know, taking up people's time. We're all about that. And oftentimes as leaders, we can be blindsided or self-centered towards our approach in building our vision and gaining the results that we so desire. So in my efforts to try to offer this leader some additional options, I recommended some possible solutions for his organizational success which include the leader to understand one, his own leadership potential, to be better, to better identify his team strengths as well as his, as well as his own strengths and weaknesses. Secondly, I suggested that the leader take time with his team, encourage them, draw them from a, to a place of confidence so they can produce the results you so desire. And finally, I recommended that the leader just simply, uh, discify his team. Now I'll talk more about being a discifying a team a little later, but the truth to the, the measure is how about offer them some additional training? You know, it's something about leaders who take the time to teach, train, develop the members on their team, whether that's a volunteer or whether that's a paid staff. I think everybody has the desire to learn more so they can be more as well as do more. And this in itself will build a commitment, will help you gain the results and build an effective team. It will also increase communication amongst your team. Nonetheless, we must understand it's important for leaders to know uh, it's not uncommon for people not to fulfill, I mean, not, it's not uncommon for people not to fully understand their strengths as well as their own limitations or how or how they can help achieve the organizational goals. We must invest in our organization development for their success. In short, it's crucial. It's a crucial step in unlocking the leader's potential and in understanding the strengths and talents that each member brings to the organization and Getting back to that discifying or discifying your organization is simply an exceptional, a disc is an exceptional tool used for uh, leadership development that will reveal strengths, areas of improvement, and provide deep insight into how each individual uh, leadership style provide deep insight into your leadership style as well as others regarding their own position within the organization. Understand your strengths as a leader enables you to establish communication so you can learn your team's needs, to equip them, to empower them into a different areas of supporting through growth and development, which in turn produces bottom line as well as the results the leader or organization may desire. Just end state. So I want to talk to you today a little bit more about identifying strengths within our uh, team's leadership. I don't know, did I, was I able to share that? Make sure I shared that. Yep, I think it's shared. You can't see, there we go. Yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit more about identifying our, our, our strengths within, uh, within our team's leadership. You know, when we think of this, some leaders are bold and daring. They're quick to seize opportunity and not afraid to meet challenges head on. These D-style leaders are dominant, direct, and decisive. 
We have in our organization some leaders who are motivators, who have the ability to inspire people. They are charismatic speakers and they know how to influence others. The I style leader is influencing, inspiring and interactive. Then we have our, our stable leaders. These leaders are led by, lead by example. They are sensible, not afraid of hard work. They appreciate the contribution of others and they have the ability to build strong teams and are loyal within the team environment. These S-style leaders or supportive leaders as we call them are stable, strong and supportive. And lastly, we have leaders who study to work to develop skills. They lead by virtue, their ability and uh, virtue of their ability and knowledge. They are your planners and they tend to lead logically. These C-style or compliance style leaders are, are all about uh, control, creativity, and being competent. Listen, I wanna be able to leave you leaders with four tips to help you maximize your potential as leaders. One, as leaders, Realize you have to start where you are. And the truth is you have to start with you. You can't lead anyone else effectively unless you are able to lead yourself effectively. And one way you can lead yourself effectively is understanding your own set of strengths and limitations. And then taking that, that understanding and understanding your team's strength and limitations. Two, get outside your comfort zone and into an unfamiliar environment. See, too often we've been doing things the old way. We're comfortable with what we've learned to do in the past. And the truth is for you to maximize and become an effective leader, uh, maximize your potential as a leader requires you to get out of your comfort zone. So what do I mean by that? I mean that oftentimes you just can't sit at the top um, dictating orders or, or handing out uh, re, uh, uh, to-do lists, you know? When I recently sat with this particular leader, I asked him, I said, had you shared your vision with your team? And his response was, absolutely I did. And I asked what was his vision or how did he share his vision? And he said to me that he, re, he gave everybody uh, the objectives and job requirements for the position uh, that they was trying to fulfill or where they were trying to help. And my, my, my thought process was, well, that's not a vision. That was sharing your objectives. That was sharing your to-do list. And so you want your team to get on board. You got to get outside yourself and spend time with them. Get out of your comfort zone and get where they are. Talk with them. Um, connect with them. Three, connect with them. Um, yeah. Connect with the personalities or behaviors outside of your own. So I recently read in a book uh, about uh, this military leader who wanted to change the culture in his organization. So he figured, you know what, I'll get out of the office. I'll go down to the troop level. I'll kick it with the troops, get to know them, um, rub some elbows with them, see what's going on within my organization. What well, needless to say, as he stepped out and he started walking the lines from unit to unit, he had his hands in his pocket, he had his face mustered up, and each time he stopped to converse with a young Joe, a soldier, he was always asking them, why are you doing that? After a few of these sessions, he couldn't realize why his organization were not receptive to him. So what did he do? Yep, he discified his organization. He bought in some coaches and some trainers to help him better understand what was going on in his organization. To his surprise, this is what they found or noted. The truth was the leader himself was an introvert. Yep, he was systematic, he was analytical, he was cautious and careful in his approach as a leader. And it rolled off into his environment. See, when he went out when he wanted to change the culture and he went amongst the, the troops to rub elbows, 
to be seen, to be friendly, to, 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 to build the esprit de corps within the unit. The truth is his behavior was protruding through. So after some analysis and after some, some, some coaching, he realized that he had to co uh, uh, approach changing his culture from a different perspective. He also found out from uh, the junior enlisted because they did surveys asking what they thought about the particular leader's leadership style. He found out that they thought he was unapproachable. They felt like they couldn't uh, just talk with him, joke with him, laugh with him. Um, they found him to be standoffish, not the type of guy to mess with. I guess that's a great attitude to have, I suppose, uh, in, in a, a, <laughs> a male dominated uh, environment you know, or a combat environment. But this leader wanted to change the culture. So the coaches and what he learned, he realized that he himself had to change. After a few weeks of, uh, of pondering what he can do differently, he realized that the next time he went out, instead of waiting uh, to ask a, uh, a soldier why he was doing what he was doing, he will ask the, uh, the soldier questions about him or herself. That in itself opened up the dynamics of the culture. So much so that uh, the junior leaders, when they saw him, gave him a nickname. And that nickname rallied all throughout the, the organization. And it helped his senior leaders find a new method and approach how to better connect with their own junior enlisted soldiers. So it's important to understand that, hey, we as leaders, we can't keep doing things the old same way, especially we moving forth in this 21st century. We're dealing with new generations of leaders that's coming up behind us. And we have to find a way or method how we can connect, communicate, and build relationships. So I wanna leave you with four tips for you leaders who desire to maximize your potential. Uh, I think I said that, right? I, yep, okay, so, and then connect. The fourth one, there we go, there we go, I'm back, I'm, I'm, I'm connected now. The fourth style or tip for you is learn a unique skill. Yep, learn a unique skill. Realize that as a leader, if you need more patience, you need to practice more patience. Realize as a leader, um, if you need to be more attention to detail, you need to enhance that skill in your life. Realize that as a leader, if you don't ever take a risk and change some things up, you'll keep continuously getting the same results day in, day out, never understanding why your team, your organization hasn't leveled up to the next level. So I want to encourage you, hey, become a practitioner of leadership. For you leaders out there that want to grow your organization, looking to understand or know more about your DISC leadership style, head over to DwayneHRoberts.com. There you can uh, uh, check the option for fiercely executing. It's a great opportunity for leaders to take uh, a survey to better identify their strengths and limitations for success. I'm your boy, Dwayne Roberts. And as always, I say success is in your hands. It's up to you what you do with it. Join me uh, each Thursday night, 7 p.m. for Practitioner of Leadership. Till next time, God bless.